հարկելի տեկյան մշագութային միջան արձանց հաղորդումներու հետևողներ, այսօր ձեզի համար մեծ անագնգալ մոնինք և այսօր մեր հիրերը իդի լան բոստ անեն, ուրեմ են պացարի գարիտ մոնինք և երախտաբար դենք, որ զույք մը մասնակցողներ մեզի բիդի միանան այսօրվա հայդակիրին։ Այսօրվա հայդակիրը մեզի շատ ըսկացագան և մեր սրդին խոսող միտի մը մասին բիդի խոսվի։ We are talking today mostly in English, we'll convert in English, to talk about a project which is called SAVE, S-A-V-E. And this project is, has been started a while ago. We'll go through it later. So I have uh, two guests from Boston with us. I will invite them, I will present them, and uh, we will talk about that project which is building our history. Building our history uh, with documents, old uh, relics, old pictures, uh, postcards. So I, I am honored to have our guests from Boston, as I said, uh, Ruth Tomasian, the founder and the president of Project <laughs> We will talk about the project. Ruth, being the founder, the president of uh, SAVE, she is a photo archivist and a special uh, social uh, historian. And we have with her uh, Tzolin Sarian, the executive director of uh, SAVE. Uh, so I will let them uh, talk later. Uh, Tolin has a, an educational background. He, she has a BA in uh, BA uh, degree from Marmi College, and she is now doing her master's in nonprofit management with Northern University. Uh, you are welcome to this podcast. So. I, I am not hearing the voice. Thank you so much. Okay, Ruth, uh, welcome. Thank you for the, accepting the invitation. Could you uh, talk about yourself? Well, I grew up, um, I would say, very American. Um, my birth certificate spells my family name the way I spell it today, but when I was two years old, my dad changed it to Thomason, S-O-N, instead of I-A-N, because he was sick and tired of, and there was an, even a previous spelling of it that was more complicated. And he just wanted to make it plain and simple. So we grew up as Thomason in a very Anglo community outside of Boston. And nobody talked about ethnicity. My mom is not Armenian. I'm proud to say she's German and Connecticut Yankee, and she's actually the one that said, Ruth, you must do this work. Um, but we grew up, yeah, we had Armenian food, but that's about it. And, and when I, as an adult, moved to New York City after teaching school for three years, I said, I, I got to get out in the real world and see what's going on, and I know there's something I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Um, when I got to New York City, among all these myriad of types of people, I would walk down to Greenwich Village and say, who am I? Where do I fit into all this? And that's when I sensed that I needed to know who I was, especially the Armenian side. At the time, it was Soviet Armenia. There was no Armenia as a country like there was Italy or France. And then, just by me following my inclinations, I was in New York working in the theater as a, uh, in costume shops, stitching and sewing costumes. I knew how to design and all that, but I was not at that level yet. And when my new Armenian community in New York City 
heard that I was in the theater and doing costumes, they said, oh, would you design costumes for our theater group? Well, I accepted, but in accepting it, I had to do research. I needed visual research. And there was absolutely nothing about what Armenians looked like in the homeland. One play was, the first play was set in Tiflis, Georgia, north of, of uh, Armenia, or what was previously Russian Armenia, north of Yerevan. What, did, what made the Armenians look different than the Georgians or the Russians living there? I needed to know this and I thought, the New York Public Library, which is well known for its picture collection, not photograph collection, but picture collection, had nothing on Armenians. And I thought, where am I gonna get this visual information? And I thought of senior citizens. And maybe, maybe they would have photographs that would show me what they looked like. So I went to a senior luncheon at, and, and told them what my need was. And before I knew it, I had all these invitations to go and visit them in their homes. Now as a senior myself, I understand what it means for a younger generation to be interested in my life, in my work. And that's what it was for them. Here's a young person who has time to spend with me and listen to me about my life. And I knew at the time that their kids were busy, that the kids had their own children, they worked 24, you know, seven kind of thing. And they didn't have time to sit with mom or pop or both and talk about the photographs. So that's how it started. And I realized after I did it for couple of years, you know what, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I, it cannot be a part-time thing. I have to do it professionally. I have to create a strategy to, to, to do it, how to organize everything. And, but because my brain told me to do it, I, I guess I knew that I could figure it out. And so I began figuring it out and consulting with, with professionals in the business of archiving. Started Project Save. Uh, that was 1975. Uh, I moved back to the Boston area in the early 1980s, and um, about five years, around 1986, I decided it was time to make Project Save a nonprofit tax exempt organization so that I could do fundraising, legitimate fundraising. Because to do it right, I needed to be professional and have a salary and employ staff and pay people to do copy work photocopy work. So that's sort of the beginnings of it. And it was in my home for 22 years. And then we moved here. We, we rent space in the Armenian Library and Museum building in Watertown, Watertown Square. And it's, it's a lovely combination of organizations because people walk in sometimes to see us, sometimes to see the museum, and they're happy to, that both are in the same place. What is uh, Project Save? What do you, what do, you do exactly? Uh, we will have an, a good video about it. Uh, maybe you talk about that, how you get those uh, pictures or uh, documents, and then maybe I'll put the video. The video will show exactly what you do, and you're talking in the video as well. And we'll show our office also, we're in the office. Um, well, first of all, we collect and document photographs. Everything and anything that has to do with Armenians, anywhere in the world, during any time period, and um, any subject matter. We don't make judgment calls on photographs. Yeah, okay, maybe we don't want your tourist is from when you took a trip to Hawaii. But we want to see everything, everything from posed, professionally shot photographs to snapshots of casual affairs, picnics, and backyard gatherings, and that kind of thing. And it, it started out that I, I needed to work from originals because that's what archives are all about, original material. But I also understood that these are genocide survivors. Mostly the early photo donors were all genocide survivors, although some of them never mentioned genocide. Um, that I couldn't expect them to give up their original photographs, take them away from their family. In some cases, 
the, the people had no children and they were thrilled that someone wanted to preserve their photographs. So at those, in those years, we either borrowed your originals or you allowed us to keep them. Now in this digital age, we only accept original photographs for us to preserve permanently. We do not return photographs. We say, you make your digital copies, have the conversation with your family, your kids, your grandkids, nieces and nephews, whomever might you think might be interested in having them at a later date. Would you prefer to make digital copies for your use to share with family and friends and Facebook and that kind of thing? Or, and, and then allow Project Save to preserve the originals. That's, that way, when you're cleaning out the house, you don't have this big box of photographs going, what am I going to do with all these photographs? Yeah. So let, let's, uh, let's go to the video, Ruth. And uh, the video is uh, quite well uh, prepared. So we'll yes, do Yes, it by, by our board member, Nubar Alexani, and he did a tremendous job for us. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'll try to share that. Uh, well, I knew I was saving something, history, photographs. And I liked S-A-V-E, and, and rather than you save again, I thought I was salute Armenians. And the people I was talking to were genocide survivors. These are valiant people, and we really haven't recognized that. My God, what they came through. So valiant, and E for existence. So salute, Armenian stallion existence. That was the thought, and I would say the prayer behind it, that we honor our elders. Project Save has collected approximately 45,000 photographs in 40 years. Uh, I began Project Save in 1975, working my way up as a theatrical costume designer in New York City. And when I got an Armenian play to costume, that was my very first play that I ever costumed, and I was thrilled. But there was no research. So I got to thinking, where am I going to get my research? What do I put on people who come from old country, homeland places? I started collecting while I was still working in the theater. And I decided, you know, you're either going to do costume design and do it well, or you're going to do project save and do it well. Now, you can always be a costume designer, but we always have the opportunity to speak with elders about their photographs to understand what you're looking at. If you don't have information in archives, in museums, for researchers to have access to, nobody can tell your story. Here's project save capturing every nuance and every detail and every every piece so that it won't be lost and it's a thriving living way for people to access it and and know about it and and, and share it well, i feel so blessed to have heard this story and, and have the ability to share them our photo donor's name is sarah bogosian his father had left Paulus for the Armenian homeland is to work in Providence, Rhode Island. So this photograph was taken to introduce him to his daughter. And then the genocide happened. And Sarah saw his whole family killed in front of his eyes. And so he's a young man of 30. He comes to the United States, reunites with his father. And among his father's things, he finds the old country family photo. And he took it to a photographer. And he said, I want you to put my father in. He had a picture of his father in his suit. The photographer dropped him in here. And very cleverly, he had a photograph of himself as a young man. And here is Sarah framing the photograph as a young man on this side. And the little boy over here. Same people, same person. Sarah told me, I carry this with me every day. Every day because this is my family. If not in real life, he put his family to back together again on paper in a photograph. Very powerful message. We're able to preserve stories because we preserve the photographs. The photographs come first. In the archives business, we do what's called item level documentation. We sit with our donors 
and document each and every photograph. Date, place, photographer, people's names. The way we learn is by asking questions. One of the things I found so remarkable here is uh, that uh, Ruth Monty really created this archive of scattered material uh, culture of the Armenian people uh, because of their history, the photographs and documents were all over the diaspora, and she made a conscious effort to bring them together in one place and to create an archive. It's inspiring that, that Ruth, in her life, with her vision, has been able to do such a vast amount, and it's a gift to our community. It's a gift to our society. We're losing respect for original materials of all sorts. And with photography, photographs is really important because to touch and feel it, to be able to carry it with you or to hold it in your hand, so much different than looking at it on a screen. This is Margaret Cadonian Malikian. She lived in Chelsea, Massachusetts. It was really from Margaret that I understood the importance of home visits to elders. And one night I had packed my bags up and I'm at the door ready. By this time we're, we're dear friends. I'm ready to kiss her goodnight. And she said to me, would you like to see one more photograph? And out of her apron pocket, she pulled this photograph. I'm pegging it for the probably mid 1920s because the Armenians were still in refugee camps. Here the women are making needlework. Their body language is so telling. And that's when I realized that photographs are social. They bring people together to visit, to talk, to show off. Photographs are a very important part of our transition of knowledge. <laughs> That whole story is as if it's not even my story. It brings tears to my eyes. Oh my goodness. Uh, what would you like to know? Um, anything specifically? Well, uh, you started very modestly and you became, uh, it became a professionally done uh, project. And uh, this is the, uh, I call it his history in the making. Uh, you're creating our past, you're creating our history, and you're preserving it preciously. So I'd like maybe to invite uh, Solin uh, to uh, present us uh, something on uh, PowerPoint. Is that right? Can you move over for Solin? Yeah. Solin, Imam Mezi, PowerPoint of PowerPoint of Bitsusuneste Inch Ganes Inch. Sure. Um, I'll just add a couple of words before I start. Um, our biggest competition are our team met Matsatsunas Mertema, Asnagaimera Achtapil Gam Gorsavilne. So, Chen Kuzer Terevis Anner Zano Chen Gam. he should take me on. Yet he should take for Nankas Nagarner at Garne, which best is like a good Sadish shop contraving on Nere de Relativa Ganner, good Sadish. Ye head us Nagarner, ye for skin and ink a cord that zinc, an ink for inch best for Ruth Guzel called Kitnal Ovenheim. Ye for basic Nicknessy Habardalang. Kidnap mer ba mutuna, yev hamash harain ba mutuna. As ipev hayen to brots katzadzink, and danik net tzadzink, kordzeshi nadzink, and yev 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 mer kaotin 
Vorkano Bokhtagariana, you had say, Tarerov. So Ivas Patriot Nera Nekomen Pastenanka were Kaprin Kiev, Yev, Yev, Melkautin Vorkan of Tagara Trumperate, Hamashkarain Kautin. Anoma Project Saber Kapri Yev, Yev Gametna. Um, we were collecting. One way we shared the photographs is with a calendar. And in 2020, our calendar was the Armenian spirit. And so I wanted to think about different ways that celebrates that Armenian spirit. It's our food, our language, our music, our dance, our faith. And so I'm gonna show you two groups of photographs. Um, the first is church consecrations um, around the world and through time. And so to see, for me, it was so powerful to see these churches being built, um, a church being built is uh, a community coming together, having uh, faith that, that there's gonna be a future there and and to say the Armenian community is going to thrive in this place. Um, the second is a group of Armenian dance photographs, or again, around the world and around time. And I, I want to share this with your audience so that you understand that you know we we're looking for these photographs to celebrate who we are as Armenians. Um, and and our photographs are used, uh, whether it's through our website, uh, projectsave.org, um, or through researchers who come in, or people who are trying to find their families as, as genealogy is a growing field um, with more DNA testing and, and the ease of the internet. We're able to provide information and provide photographs and provide uh, those connections and, and these photographs are used and, and, and needed. And, and even if people may not know the names or dates, it's okay. There's others that may. And, and, and by, ha by us having the photographs, we are able to share them and use them much more than if they remain in an attic or in a drawer, dusty and, and forgotten. We're able to, to bring them into the, into the realm of our, of our um, archives. Um, so let me, let's go through quickly through some of the... Yeah, meanwhile, I'll talk. Mezi gernas sel, tun gernas es kasil, gernas es sel arkyok miyayn batger gavakek, te voc uriş panera gavakek. So batgerin hama peryal tufte. Antara bes na batger avges kasin, yev Yev Yete um Oninak travel documents, gam graduate gam diplomas, Damanak Panit, Yet in the Garin Bati Gabuni. Um this is our first uh church, eighteen ninety-six, uh Gedi Pasha Armenian Congregational Church. Um this is 1900, Fresno, California. Ratifying the Armenian Apostolic Church in America Constitution, 1902, Worcester. 1906, New Jersey. I'm gonna go quickly through these because there's a lot. Uh, this is in 1907, Marash. So again, going global back around the world, it's through Kebok Church. June 16, 1907, Marash. Um, 1926, Connecticut. 1928, Philadelphia. This is Palm Sunday. So, Zalgazak, Tiarito. You have a guy at Zalgazak, you have a guy at Zalgazak, you have a guy at Zalgazak. 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 You have a guy at um, so, Vari Sakhkoma, I for this make a hashib of Tibo Garanan, uh, Iper Alfa Garanan Nelas Nagari, Yev Anuna, Anbur Nagaramez in the Berate. Um, 
um, this is in Halle, 1937. It's, they're carrying the cornerstone from the school in Marash. Um, so imagine, in honor of a new school in Marash, they've brought, in, in Halle, they've brought with them this, the corner, to, to lay the cornerstone from Marash. Um, what a, and, and for me, it was powerful to have a little boy, again, this idea of the future, this investment into, the, into our future, into our community. Um, this is 1956 Watertown. This is one of my favorite photographs in our collection. Uh, it's in 1974, Wisconsin. If you look in the right of the picture, you can see the snow is coming sideways. So these people in, in this terrible weather, like you know in Toronto, they have committed to breaking the ground to build a new church for their children, for their future, to keep and preserve Armenian faith, Armenian uh, culture, Armenian heritage. This is a picture of hope to me, and it's 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 truly one of our one of my favorites. Um, it's a commitment to our faith, a commitment to our to our heritage. Um, and imagine they 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 could have waited until spring, but they did it in December of 1974 in the snow coming sideways. <laughs> Um, 1989, here's a color photo in New York. Um, now let's jump to Armenian dance. Um, this is, we're not sure where, 1915, about? 1934 in Athens, Greece. 1938 in Calcutta. Again, the fact that we collect photographs from all over the world, wherever Armenians have lived and continue to live. Um, this is the Matasira Ganjemara in Calcutta, India. Uh, 1970, 1970 uh, Washington, D.C., the Banik Armenian Dance Group. And a family gathering, it's, it's actually a graduation gathering. But I, I wanted to show this too, that it's, you know, it's not just the formal events, but it's, you know, the family gatherings, it's, it's what brings us together is also important to Project SAVE. Um, and then 1988 in California. Uh, also 1988 in Hirobagan, Armenia. So again, to show not just the diaspora, but also in Armenia. Um, 2006 in Alexandria, Virginia, and 2006 in Boston. Um, I, I show these dance photographs, again, to show how we've kept our, our heritage, our, we keep our, um, around the world, wherever we've lived, it's important for us to, to hold on to these traditions and, and, and also teach them to our future generations. And that's what Project Save is doing as well. I'm gonna stop the share, so. All right. These photographs, we're, we're collecting them, we are making them available, accessible, so that our future generations too can, can be proud of being Armenian and know what it is to be Armenian. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Talib. Uh, as you know, uh, we witnessed, these are pictures who were gathered uh, throughout from all over the world, as you've seen. And this is uh, what we call saving our history, saving our heritage. Mer batmuchuna bahelu, mer inknuchuna avakain, mer hachor serunt nairun zanotats nelu, patsarik arit nevor save mezi gdramatre, yev saving michotsav, Gernank is kabe savenel eyes, uh, harstuchuna vorunink, vor mer taraknerum mechne, gam mer duperum mechne, vor hachort mer dera borcham tatskin, vidi achpenedvi, mer zavaknerum gam mer torniknerum vome, 
որով անձանոտ նգարներ են։ Իդի խնդրեի, որ այդ նգարները հասնին աբահով ծերքերու մեջ և փոխանցվին սեյվին։ Եվ սեյվ իր պրովեշնել գազմով ծերնոցներով գաշխադին այդ նգարները բահելու, բահվանելու և թվակրելու։ Արդյոք գուզեց անպողջացնել այս սսացներուս վրա պամգա, որ գրնաս սել ծոլին։ Եվ մի են մեր կոյց բահել չէ, այլ սկեն են էլ, որ բեսի կոյց ատգին։ Սո անվոր իպեր բրիսրջ պետ կունի կամ պնդրեք, որ մասանվոր գեմը, մենք ոչ է մի են գբահենք, ոչ է մի են գրքրենք անում դել թվագան և այլն, հայց ավելի կարևորը գրնանք պոխանցել ասնկարները։ Եվ անվոր անվոր վիլմ դետք ունի կամ կիտ մը գրքրե և եվ լուսանգարի դետք ունի անոր համար է մեր կործը, որ ասնկարները դեսվին և կործածվին և մի անդարագի մեջ, մի ամ մեր թարագները մեջ աղջենք ուզեք, ուզենք, որ ասնկարները խոսվին անոնց մասին, էի, դես առանոնց շապիկը գիշես ինչպես մեկ հակակ մենք ան, գիշես մեր բապական դել են։ Հետո ամենեն կարևորը չգորսվին, Ես անստական բատմչումներ ունիմ և այսպիսին շատ արժեքավոր նույնիսկ թեղասպանության է կապ ունեցող դոխիմաններ, որ ես տեսած եմ ընդանիք տերու մոտ և այսոր գործվեց անատոնք, որով տեղափոխվեցան և ացնդու� Yeah, so I would like maybe to conclude this meeting, this podcast, I would like to announce something which is important and I would like to announce it on this, in this, during the podcast. The Montreal Tekean Cultural Association took a resolution, came to a conclusion that we will morally support your undertaking. We will try to promote your services uh, in gathering uh, these Armenian relics uh, in Canada, uh, and we will uh, uh, collaborate with you and uh, hopefully, if we're successful, we will have uh, an interesting uh, uh, collection of uh, items uh, to be transmitted to your attention for safekeeping, safeguarding, and reusing for research and whatever. Yes, Uraman, Bidi Uzei Avardel Hayerenov որ թեքյան մշագութային միջան Մոնդրիալի մասնաջուղը այսօր որը շում առած է, որ պրոջեկտ ծեիվին գրնակ են ազորավիկ կանքնի և հետաբնտե, որ այս մեր մասունքները, արժեքավոր մասունքները, այս մեր նգարները, որ թեև մեջիններ ա մենք այսօր պիտի ճանանք տեկյանը իր գարգին, ճանանք դարաձել այս լուրը, որ ինչ նգար որ ունիք, վիճագացույցներ, հին դոքիմանդներ, պոլորը գետրոնացնենք աբահով ծերքերու մեջ։ It's my desire that our listeners, if they have ancient pictures, diplomas or related items uh, to uh, trust uh, this tremendous work which SAVE is doing and let's collect them and hand them 
for posterity to be kept for life forever. Uh, I have witnessed the loss of many such documents, but I would like to do my share to save my history, my ancestors. Uh, so this is an appeal I'm launching through this post podcast. Uh, and uh, mind you, I'm not paid for it. So. <laughs> Well, we so appreciate the initiation of this collaboration, and I want Soline in on this because Soline runs the day-to-day -day operations and management of Project Save, and she's heavily involved in this kind of thing, and we would love to have further conversations about how to go about doing it. Do we go up to you? Would you like to, us to train people? Things like that. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, have a conclusion remark and uh, we'll uh, finish this po podcast and i hope this will become like one of your pictures we are setting a cornerstone in uh, montreal and that cornerstone let's make it to a church and uh, become successful in gathering such uh, uh, very valuable, valuable uh, documents, pictures, and bring it to your attention to for safekeeping. Well, that, that's a wonderful proposal, and we accept with open arms and hearts. We're, we're thrilled that you want to involve us in your community. It, it means a lot to us. Great. Uh, so I thank you both. Thank you very much for your participation. Well, thank you for all the work you've done. And goodbye to your audience. We hope to meet you one day. Bye-bye. Goodbye.